How much sweat does the average adult produce in a year? Is it A, enough to fill a large water pistol, B, enough to fill a bucket, or C, enough to fill a family car? In fact, the answer is C, enough to fill a family car. 1,264 litres, to be precise. Ugh. This is a case for investigation. Ouch. This is Loughborough University, the place to come to study all things sweaty. We're going to find out why we sweat and find out where we sweat the most. Using some high-tech equipment and this sweat collection vest, we're going to collect Chris's sweat. Now I've got to run on this treadmill in this room, which is kept at 50 degrees Celsius, and I promise you that is really hot. If your bath was this hot, you'd burn yourself. So I need to lose heat, and it's very hard to lose heat when the air around you is hotter than you need to be. And the only way you can do it is by sweating. So hot it hurts! So the reason we sweat is to take the heat energy away from our bodies to allow us to cool down when we get hot. But it doesn't work very well when you put on a bin bag it stops you evaporating the sweat. True, but you can't stop running yet. This is Professor George Havanith, an expert in sweat. Well, it's a smelly job, but somebody's got to do it. He's weighing all the pads from Chris's vest and shoes to find out how much sweat he's made and where the most sweat has come from. So he just measured me, and I'm a kilo lighter now than I was at the beginning of my run, and that is that much sweat that I've made, which is quite a lot in half an hour, isn't it? It is a lot, yes. Uh, typically, top athletes would go up to three to four litres. I think you, with just over a litre in four, half an hour, 40 minutes, that's a great performance, I would say. I'm slightly offended, slightly offended. I thought I was a top athlete. <laughs> Dream on, Chris. Anyway, let's find out where you are the sweatiest. We compare the different values for the pads. Mm -hmm. What we see is that you sweat it a lot more on, on your back, on your spine, rather than on the front. So, really? OK. And that's typically what we find in general when we measure people. The sweatiest part of your body is your forehead with almost everybody, usually about double the amount of the rest of the body. And then the back is the second part. What about my feet? Yeah, surprisingly enough, feet sweat a lot less than we think. Usually, usually we have feet in shoes, mm -hmm. and that, of course, encapsulates the sweat, and that's why we think they're very sweaty. But when we exercise, feet sweat only about a fifth of the rest of your body. So, we now know that Chris's feet are not the sweatiest part of his body, but are they the smelliest? Let's find out. So I've been running in the heat room, I've sweated masses, but which smells worse, the pads from my body or my feet? You've got to find someone willing to have a whiff first, though. No, no thanks. No thanks, you sure? Yeah. Just smell my trainers? <laughs> no? First, sweat from his body. Yeah. What do you think? Not very nice. <laughs> it's, it's not a great smell, to be honest. <laughs> OK, try a trainer. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> that's disgusting. Oh, yeah, they're bad. <laughs> oh, grim. <laughs> anyway, I think we've got a whiffy winner. My feet were by a long way the smelliest, and I don't find that surprising. These are Zahn's trainers. Oh, that's where they went. But it's clear that despite our feet being less sweaty than other parts of our bodies, they are indeed smellier. And that's because they're wrapped up in shoes every day. But without sweat, your body wouldn't be able to regulate its temperature and you simply wouldn't survive. <laughs>